Tony's a special person because he has an ability to speak with you and when you're talking with him it feels like you're the most important person that he's, he's in the world to him at that particular moment. As far as I'm concerned he's a, a world-class human being and he's an excellent uh, businessman. I looked at Tony as more like an older brother to me than uh, a boss. But he just comes in and makes you feel like he's known you for 20 years. And that's what people love and that's again part of his great success that he has. He is a leader in, in every sense of the word. He gives uh, people the, the opportunity to, to reach and achieve their true potential. And uh, he does it in a way that uh, it's, it's evident that he actually cares about you. He's a, he's a good friend to his friends, he's a good employer to his employees, he's a good father to his kids, he's a good husband to my mother, and uh, overall just a genuinely good guy. You know, it's well known that uh, Tony is a, is, is a man of the people and really is a great listener. I think he cares about uh, what someone has to say. He's a down-to-earth individual uh, who you can really trust as a friend and be proud to call him a friend. Tony is a type of individual that uh, where you and I take a, um, a seed, for instance, and we look at it and we say, oh, it's a seed. Well, Mr. Faultball looks at it differently. It's not a seed to him, it's a tree. Tony Falbo was born and raised in Cosenza, Italy. His parents, Ernesto and Giulia Falbo, wanted to provide a better future for their children, so they decided to immigrate to Canada in 1960. As a 16-year-old in Toronto, his first year in his new country, Tony continued a passion that began in Italy and took night school classes in electronics at Central Technical School. As with most new immigrants to Canada, the Falbo family had limited means, and Tony worked to help support the family. My first job was washing cars. So for the summer of 1960, I was in a car wash for about three, four months, and uh, made a living for whatever I could. And then in the fall of uh, uh, that year, I found a job in a lamp factory, which I was working diligently for about three years. But at night, I was going to electronic school. And one day I decided that uh, assembling lamps was not my full-time job. So I decided to go to an employment office on my own uh, and look for a job in electronics. So that's what I did. Uh, the employment office directed me to this new company that was just starting known as Mirror Town. I went for an interview and I was hired. In fact, it was a Thursday afternoon. Uh, and the fellow there told me to come on Monday he says, no, why Monday? Tomorrow's Friday, I can come on Friday. Tomorrow I can start working. Great, beautiful. And Tony came to work. He was very quiet and he just was very diligent and he did his work. And he learned the business from the ground up at that point. I was just a 17 year old kid, uh, you know, out of school and uh, looking for a job. And I met Tony for the first time uh, very early in the morning. He was already shown his uh, leadership role right from the get-go when I met him at uh, Mirtone that first time. Tony was basically running the whole company. He had reached that, that stage, at that early stage in his life already, running a company. Every requirement that was there for the company, I stepped in, I went out of my way to fulfill that requirement, and then automatically I became the president by applying myself and working very, very hard and long hours, I might add. As president of Mirtone, Tony's management style and deep knowledge of the business appealed to clients, vendors, and his employees. I walk in the room, uh, Tony and Sonny were there, and uh, first thing I said, uh, hi, Mr. Falbo. I call him, you know, Mr. Falbo. And uh, his answer was right away, he said, just call me Tony. He's a true gentleman. He came across very strong. He had a really good memory. He seemed to know his business very well. And he knew all aspects, many aspects of the business in a detailed way that I'd never seen before. 
It was Tony's vision that Mir Tone evolved from manufacturing intercoms and guitar amplifiers to the business of designing and manufacturing fire alarms. The fire business was a very stable uh, legislative business and I knew right then and there that uh, the fire business was going to go a long way uh, because it's a legislated uh, product, must be in every building. And uh, looking back, I think that was the right decision. He realized that uh, systems that were easy to install, easy to understand, uh, make buildings uh, safer. You know, the first systems he, he developed were systems for you know, daycare centers and restaurants and, and small-scale occupancies that could go in easy and make the building safe very quickly. The success that he did, he, he was able to get through with those goals was, was really remarkable. And uh, I think it's, it's related to the way he was and it's his, his attention to detail which really impressed me throughout. As president, Tony oversaw the change of Mir Tone from a $2 million a year business to a $35 million yearly business in the 1980s. By 1988, some of Mir Tone's founders had left the business. With innovative and easy-to-use products, Mirtone expanded across Canada and the U.S. This success made Mirtone attractive to larger competitors, and ownership decided the time had come to sell the business. In 1988, Mirtone was sold to General Signal. The company had grown at a certain level that because of various forces, various uh, stages of the growth, uh, I believe there was the right time to sell the business at that time, knowing that at the back of my mind, I wanted to eventually restart having control of my own destiny. By that time, I had known Tony for over 12 years. I saw a man that put his heart and soul into a business, into the people that he loves, um, basically disappearing. Uh, I know that I spoke to him and he was extremely sad to see all this just dissolve. The biggest concern really was for the people, but we were selling to a larger company in the same field. So in my mind, I said, well, the, those, the key people will still go forward in the same business and hopefully they will create a new environment with a new company. As part of the sale of Mirtone, Tony had signed a three-year non-compete agreement preventing him from designing and manufacturing fire alarm systems. During this time, Tony joined his good friend, Frank Vanelli at Guardia, selling products manufactured by a former Mirtone competitor, Notifier. In 1991, Tony's non-compete agreement had expired and his desire to design and manufacture his own line of products would come to life in a new company, Mircom. When we started, a lot of my friends were questioning me whether that was the right decision to start a manufacturing company here in Toronto, in Canada, because in those days already you could hear and see that the manufacturing sector was moving down to the Far East and what have you. Uh, but I was determined, I says, hey, uh, if, uh, if we're in Toronto and we have a lot of good people and we did it in the Muratone days, there's no reason why we shouldn't do it as Mircom as well. I recruited a number of people, some of which were from the Muratone days, uh, and we restarted from uh, the bottom and we created an environment. And I tell you, 92, 93, and 94, the first three years of the Muratone era, were very, very difficult years. To see, you know what, that all the hard struggles that he went through began to flourish. I mean, what you see today took a long time. I mean, it took since 1991, basically, to get. But you had to see where Tony started from, and as I've always been described, all the late nights that Tony put in, you know, and the money and just the hardships. And lucky, I think a lot of it was due to not just his perseverance, but also the people that love him, you know, and, and, and came back to him as soon as he was able to, uh, to hire them. He looked at everyone as an extended member of his family. He treated everyone with respect, and, and he got to know the individuals. He knew their names, he knew their backgrounds and their history. He was very uh, dedicated to his staff as well as, and in return, then he received that dedication back. 
as Mircom grew and expanded its product line and workforce, the need for a new and modern facility arose. In 2003, Mircom broke ground on a new 85,000 square foot state-of-the-art facility in Vaughan, Ontario. As the business matured, so did Tony's family. Sons Mark, Rick and Jason joined Mircom in a variety of positions within the company. Well, these days, the most satisfaction beside the product and technology and what have you is the fact that I have my three sons associated with the business, their choice. His mindset was to continue to grow the business, to see the business flourish, to have an opportunity for a family business, uh, really to continue on the path that he'd started. For us, that weighed in, but it wasn't the only decision. The pressure to join the company was never uh, outward and never felt. So I would have to say, um, you know, again, if he did have a plan for us to come aboard, it was definitely a clandestine sort of stealth plan, but it worked out great. We're all here now and, and uh, you know, we're happy that we're here. You want to actually do things that, that contribute back to the rest of the world. And when you can do that in a way where you're doing it as a family and, and working together with the people you care about, and uh, it, it makes it a lot easier. A lot of people supporting me. Number one on the list is my wife. Because I tell you, she's been a pillar of strength. I remember in the early days, she definitely looked after the family, the kids, because I was truly spending a lot of time in the business, uh, both physically, mentally, and everything else. So Emma, she looked after the family. Uh, she was very supportive all along, and uh, I'm sure without her, we would not be here today. The Mircom Group of Companies is now a major player in the building solutions industry and has earned a reputation for excellence, innovation and quality. After 50 years in the game, Tony Falbo, as an innovator, entrepreneur and humanitarian, continues to seek ways to improve the fire safety of future generations of buildings and the people who occupy them. Mircom has achieved uh, major milestones already. Uh, we're established right across Canada, parts of US and some international markets. I truly believe with a commitment as a family and all the people around us, because we have a lot of good people in here and they're part of the company, uh, we can go a long way in establishing ourselves both in technology and expansion of territories worldwide. So looking to the future, we have the talent, the technology, people, so hopefully they will bring this foundation to different heights. Sky is the limit. <laughs>